If someone's organ is failing and they don't have a willing and compatible family member who can donate, say, a kidney or part of their liver, often that person joins a waiting list for years. Some never get a successful transplant. Newer models of so-called paired donations have helped improve rates of live organ transplants. These allow donors from different families or groups to exchange organs to get around the problem of incompatibility. Until recently, paired donations have been like for like, so one kidney exchanged for another. But earlier this year, a case study in the American Journal of Transplantation described the very first case of a bi-organ paired exchange, where one family's kidney was swapped for another family's liver. ABC Science's Carl Smith with this story. It actually started because of my mom. My mom has been suffering from a kidney disease for quite a while since she was in her teens. Eliana Devesa lives in Santa Cruz in California. Her mother, Erosalyn, has fibrillary glomerulonephritis, a condition where the body produces unusual proteins that can cause damage to the structures in the kidneys involved in filtering the blood. Without dialysis, the condition can lead to kidney failure or death. She was on dialysis every single day for eight hours, so she would do it throughout the night. It was helping her, but at the same time, it was extremely painful for her, and it was just really hard for me and my family to watch. And so I was a really healthy person, and there was definitely something I could do. So Aliana looked into whether she could donate one of her kidneys to her mother. But my doctors and her doctors just concluded that because I could develop the same condition at a later time in my life, it wasn't a good choice for me. But she was still able to donate another organ to help her mother. Aliana had been looking into other options, including so-called paired kidney exchanges. This is where a recipient and a donor are incompatible, and they find another recipient and donor pair who are also incompatible. By swapping the donor organs between the pairs, it becomes possible for both recipients to get a kidney. Aliana couldn't donate one of her kidneys because it might affect her own health. So she looked at whether anyone had donated another organ instead, in a kind of exchange. I came across an article from the researchers in Carnegie Mellon about the possibility of donating a different organ so that whoever is in need of an organ can receive the one they need. This article was published by two researchers in Carnegie Mellon University's computer science department, applying ideas around market optimization and economics to organ donation. It gave Eliana the idea that instead of exchanging one of her kidneys, she could offer up part of her liver instead. I used that article as the basis for all of my research and like my questions that I sent to a bunch of hospitals across California. None of them knew what I was talking about. They didn't know like what department to transfer me to, or just in general, they didn't know what I was talking about. The last person that I reached out to was Dr. Roberts at UCSF, and he responded to me the next morning. That's Dr. John Roberts, professor of surgery at the University of California, San Francisco. We're always looking for new ways to do things, and Eliana found that there was an economist at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh who had thought of this situation where you could have this trans-organ exchange where you had to exchange the liver for a kidney. This was sort of a theoretical paper written by this professor of business. Eliana brought this idea to me, and it just seemed like a good idea. At the time where I was researching and when I had initially proposed the idea to UCSF, I was 19. From that point on, we just tried to figure out how to make it happen. So Aliana offered to donate part of her liver in exchange for a kidney for her mother. We just went with the liver just because it's one of the only organs like that you can donate as a live donor. And it was something that I was okay with too, since it's able to regenerate and so it was okay with me. And so we were looking for people that couldn't donate their liver because they're incompatible and, and offering them this chance and found another couple, another pair, two sisters. My sister was in stage four liver failure. 
This is Annie Simmons, a fitness instructor who lives in Caldwell, Idaho. She and her sister Connie were the other two people involved in this kidney liver swap. She was just declining and declining and she was asking for somebody to be a liver donor and as she was searching I just told her that I would do that for her. It was just that my liver lobe was too small. That was the only thing. The hospital team checked their compatibility with Aliana and her mother, Rosalyn. They called me and asked me if I would be interested in a kidney donor exchange, and I had no idea what that was about. And they explained to me that someone else would donate part of their liver to my sister if I would donate one of my kidneys to their mother. I told them I would think about it, and then the very next day, I went ahead and just said yes. Because this was the first time different organs were going to be exchanged like this, the hospital's ethics committee had to assess the case. Dr John Roberts says one of the main things they considered was whether this would be a fair exchange. The risk of dying with donating a liver is about three times higher than the risk of dying from donating a kidney. So risk of dying of donating a kidney is about one in 3,000 and risk of donating a liver is about one in 1,000. And so it's important that everybody understand that everybody's going to be better off except the person who was going to donate a kidney and now is going to donate a liver. It's really that discussion and you want to make sure that they understand. But for Aliana, who wanted her get her mother transplanted, she accepted that risk. The surgery that I was willing to do was just a lot riskier than if I had just decided to donate or if I was just able to even donate my kidneys. So it's a great idea in general. I think it's just some people might not be willing to go through the same journey that I went through. Because she was willing to do the exchange and was aware of the risks, the ethics committee approved it. All four people prepared for simultaneous surgery on the same day. They hadn't met before, which isn't uncommon in organ exchanges. Annie Simmons. I had no idea who she was. I just knew I was going to help save someone else's life and my sister's. It wasn't suggested that we all talk before the surgery, but the day before the surgery, we were all in the waiting room, actually, and Connie and her husband were was talking about the procedure and just, like, really talking to the entire room about it, and they were so proud of it, and they didn't realize that my mother and I were sitting right behind them. And so my mother and I kind of just glanced at each other, and I just, I just whispered to her, I think that's the lady I'm donating to. But that was the only time we had, like, indirectly met before the surgery even happened. And the four-person kidney-liver exchange was a complete success. Eliana Devesa. And recovery was good for three of us. Connie had experienced some complications after the surgery, so she was in the hospital a little longer. But everyone is doing really well now. Often I forget that I even donated because I feel the same. I don't feel any different. Annie Simmons. Dr. John Roberts says paired organ exchanges like this should lead to more live donations, which would save more lives. He suggests that in the US, where there are currently around 300 live liver donations each year, organ transplant swaps like this could lead to a 10% bump in donations. I think that's a good number. I don't know because we've been looking to do this again and haven't really found another pair to do it in. But I think that particularly if we broaden this to other institutions that are doing both living kidney transplants and living liver transplants, that there's a potential to expand it. Why was it that we had to rely on an economist and a patient to trial this for the first time? (laughs) Because the rest of us weren't smart enough. (laughs) I mean, I think the economist was very smart to think of it. And Ileana was very smart to look around and try and find solutions and found this solution. So the two of them, in the end, brought that solution to me, and I thought it was a good idea, something worth trying. Has this been implemented elsewhere in the U.S.? Could it be, and anywhere else in the world? I do think it's, you know, potentially we can expand it. It's just trying to find those pairs, and we did this within UCSF, but 
there's other places, uh, transplant centers in California and in, in the United States, where we could actually do these exchanges between centers, and that actually may bring out a larger potential pool. I definitely think it could be instituted in the United States and, you know, Australia too. There's no specific regulation around trans-organ or bi-organ live exchanges, so they're reliant on individual hospitals or patients agreeing to a swap. But some researchers have begun discussing what such a framework might look like, with the key safeguards centering around patient support and informed consent. For Aliana and Annie, they say they're just happy that there was a creative solution to help their loved ones. A year after the surgery, we were all back in San Francisco for our yearly checkups and we all actually got to meet at UCSF and it was very emotional. But before the meeting, we had been in contact by like by email and by letters. We had exchanged gifts and stuff. And we're still in contact to this day. Organ donor Annie Simmons, ending that piece from ABC Science's Carl Smith. Thanks also to sound engineers Russell Stapleton and Hamish Camilleri. I'm James Bullen. This has been The Health Report. Catch you next time.